Hey everyone, this is Andre and Soli. We're just going out on a walk here with Carlos. Say hi, Papa. <laughs> and I uh, just wanted to make a video and talk about the S word. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people ask us what we think about the S word. And the S word is not the four letter S word, but submission. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people ask us what we think about submission since we are a Christian, a young Christian married couple and we have a baby and obviously we believe in traditional values and submission is one of those things that a lot of people think is very controversial they make it into a really big deal they're like oh, submission that's the worst thing in the whole wide world <laughs> yes that's true it's one of those things that people you know that carries a lot of controversy and there are many examples of submission that may be you know erroneous or maybe corrupted both in you know the way of authoritarian men and in the way of authoritarian women and so typically as soon as a lot of people hear submission they immediately think of violence they immediately think of abuse you know male oh. abuse control and a lot of stuff so we just want to dispel some of those myths and talk about what we think truly what we think about the word submission the yes word so the first thing that I would say is uh, talk about what it is instead of what it is not. So I think submission is about a man coming together and marrying a woman, right? So you have the husband and then you have the wife. And submission is one of those things that happens naturally when you are under the umbrella of God. For example, if you, if you have the other S word out of wedlock, <laughs> If you have which how many letters three letters <laughs> out of wedlock then what happens is you end up not under the umbrella of God mm -hmm. and because you're not under the umbrella of God it's a sin yeah it's a sin and, and not only that but you end up without God's approval and without God's blessing upon your marriage or upon your relationship so even though you may act like you're married uh, even though you know the wife wants to submit and even though maybe the man wants to be head of the wife you know in the right way it's almost impossible mm -hmm. because you are in a place where you can't do that because God is not blessing you and yeah. blessing your marriage so what happens then you know when you are living that way you end up not being able to submit or it looks it looks corrupted like I was talking about earlier you know, maybe the wife is too overbearing or maybe the husband is controlling and is, you know, abusive. That's what happens when you're not under the umbrella of God. But submission happens naturally when you are under the umbrella of God. So that's the first thing and what that looks like. Soli, would you mind saying what you think that looks like? Like practically? Yeah, like because if I say submission happens naturally, okay, then how, how does it naturally play out? So I think that naturally, once you're under that umbrella of God, you have your desires and what you are willing to do change. So you'll naturally want to follow your husband, even if it's hard. So you will defer to him for decision making um, for most things, you know, like if I want to make a big purchase, I'll say, Andre, is this okay? Do you mind if I do this? It also has a lot to do with just respect and just having an attitude towards your husband of appreciation, not talking bad about him in public, you know, not trying to be controlling of him and not trying to be his Holy Spirit and fix him and change him um, and just allowing God to do that and you kind of stepping out of the way and doing your role, which is to be his help me and to just love him and serve him and not be his mother. <laughs> That's a really good point. I mean, those are practical ways that, sorry, yeah, I got, I thought that was my father-in-law. <laughs> some of those, I probably just gave them the weirdest face. <laughs> those are just some practical ways. That's what submission looks like yeah. in a practical way. Mm -hmm. Submission can look that way. And so again, if you're under the umbrella of God, it happens naturally. You don't need to do anything else. A lot of times you don't even think, you know, am I submitting? You know, mm -hmm. I think a lot of times a lot of women overthink it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of men think, is she submitting to me or is she? No, it happens naturally yeah. when you are under the umbrella of God. A lot of it, like I said, is just being 
respectful and just loving him and you know kind of catering to his needs asking him what he wants to eat and if he says he likes a certain outfit on you you know making sure to you know wear that on occasion and different things like that and then one more point about what it is because we say you know it happens naturally so what i was saying by saying that it happens when a man marries a woman and they are under god what i mean by that is you don't really have to think about it that's mm -hmm. what submission is a mission is just marriage christian marriage the way that god designed it that's what it is you don't have to think about it you don't have to come up with a definition of it and yeah. anything like that there will be times like when it's harder to let go of your will and just fully trust your husband which is another thing that it is it's a lot of trust and your husband trusts that he is trusting God to lead you. Mm, that's good. The other thing is, is a good point that Sully just made is, is the leadership of the husband. That's what submission is. It's just the leadership of the husband. The man, the husband, is going to have the last say. So you have to be the leader in saying, okay, this is where God is guiding us. You know, maybe you have to move to go to another job. Maybe you have to move because of other reasons, or maybe you have to get another job. Maybe the family needs to get buy a house. Maybe we need to sell the house. Those sorts of decisions. Yes, the input of the wife is very important because it's like the vice president, right? That always happens. You always want the input of the vice president or whoever else is under you. But at the end of the day, the last say is going to come to the husband and that's why ladies should marry and should look for wise men that they can trust with hard decisions mm -hmm. at the end of the day that's what you want to look for that's one of the things that is a good characteristic of submission it's basically following the lead of the husband now let's talk about what submission is not the first thing the submission is not is abuse so submission doesn't condone the husband exerting his authority in an abusive or violent way. When that happens, you've already lost the grip. You've lost the grip when you need to resort to violence or to abuse in order to exert your authority. The wife is going to follow you more and more when she goes crazy and the husband is being calm and says, no, no matter what you do and what you say, this is the way we're going. But if the wife is acting crazy in the husband is also acting crazy and, ah, and now you know he's beating her and doing all that the wife is going to trust him even less than mm -hmm. she currently does so that actually takes the submission aspect away and the aspect of leadership and wisdom away from the man and makes the woman respect him less so of course submission does not mean that it just means that it happens naturally as the husband when you lead with love when you lead in the correct way that doesn't always mean that you're gonna you know cater to what the wife wants but you're gonna say this is the way we're going and basically whether you like it or not and she may be sad sometimes she may be happy most of the time but at the end of the day you just do it calmly and you do it in a great way and things is gonna happen naturally and it gets easier and easier and easier for them to do that what other things would you say are not well, submission I wanted to say that submission is not meant to be mutual I think a lot of people think oh well the Bible says submit to one another but it doesn't say mutual submission the husband doesn't submit to to your will you submit to the, your husband's will as he submits to the will of the father so by definition mutual submission is impossible and I think some people have the idea of like the husband wants the wife to follow him and then she's like well we're supposed to submit to each other you can't submit to each other because for submission to work somebody has to be above in authority and then somebody has to be following the person who's following the authority they're under the authority and that's submission otherwise submission is literally impossible um that's so that's point. why we're we're talking more so about like what the wife should do in this situation as opposed to you know the man leading that's a, a similar topic but that's not what we're getting into at the moment <laughs> true and then another myth to dispel would be that the wife doesn't have any input yeah that the wife has no say and i mean that's it's a really Really dumb thing you know and, and I'm sure it does happen I'm sure everyone has seen marriages in which either the wife or the husband has no say in the decision-making process mm -hmm. like I said earlier of course I value Soli's input I mean I ask for her input all the time I say hey what do you think about this do you think we Can should I do say, this I don't know just mm -hmm. yeah. you know, I just say I don't know a lot though. <laughs> and she'll tell me like, I think we should do this. I think we should do that. She'll just give me her input. But of course I value it because that's who she is. That's why I married her is because I want her input into my life and the way our families run. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, even if we disagree, I'm going to have to come to a conclusion and I'm going to be the one that is responsible to God to make the right decisions. She's not because she's not the leader of the family. She kind of gets a free pass. Just give birth to children. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the way I think about it is like these little ones. Hey.
Hey, bye bye. Hey. The way I think about it is these little ones, the little kids, they don't have any responsibility to Christ as to where the family is going. So if we do something bad as a family, this little baby has no responsibility in that mm -hmm. because he didn't make any decisions. You know, we're basically forcing him to do everything that he does. And so, of course, as a family, he's not going to be responsible. Like, oh, why did you guys do this as a family? Or why did you guys do that as a family? God is not going to ask him those questions because that's me. However, he will ask solely, like, why did you do that with your kids? You know, why did you treat them that way? Mm -hmm. Because she's in charge of the children. And so, yeah, she's going to report to me. And I'm going to be the one to tell her, like, hey, listen, treat them this way. She treat them that way and she's gonna report to me as basically she is taking care of them but they have no responsibility in it she also has no responsibility as to overall how the family is led so i just mm -hmm. want to dispel those myths about her not having any not input yeah no not about the doormat thing I'm but happy, thriving <laughs> and i do want to say i know it's very weird i think for most people to hear this and we may get a lot of hate on this video but we don't really care because we no. believe it's the truth and this is the way that god made the family Mm -hmm. If you just look at it biblically, if you look at it, you know, the way that God made the family, this is the way he made it. And when you do submit to the ways of God, it's blissful, it's amazing, and there's really no worry. You can start to live very peaceful lives. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, anything else you want to say about this? No, submit to your husband. Yeah. And respect him. And one more thing, just that's why we advocate for really knowing whether or not marry a good man. Because if you marry a man that you can't see yourself obeying, it's a done deal. It's never going to happen. You have to marry as a woman a man that you can see yourself obeying. And I, yeah, again, that makes sense. Because he's just going to fawn all over you. And you're going to think, oh, this is the most amazing thing. Like, he loves me. He respects me. He treats me so well. And you then, by the time it comes to your marriage and it comes to, you know, making decisions, and he's not somebody who can lead you. He always looks to you. He always is like, what do you want to do? You know, you can't marry. You have to marry a guy that's strong and a leader, not somebody that that just wants to please you with yeah. every single little thing he does. Yeah, and that goes contrary to everything that the world is telling you. But that's why you're a Christian, right? Because you're not of this world and you want to be like Christ. And mm -hmm. this is the way that Christ has led the people, his people. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure that you subscribe if you haven't. This is just a video that we just wanted to make sure we put out there and I hope you enjoy listening to this. Let us know what you think down in the comments. Watch one of these videos here that are suggested. We will see you next time. Bye-bye. I just want to show Carlos. Say bye, chubby. Give me some bebecita, besosa. Give me some. Give